Hello and welcome to our first video. Today we're doing a problem request from a student at New College. Um, I didn't. I haven't copied down the actual problem itself. I've only copied down the parts of the problem. I'll read that out loud right now. Um, candles once lit are self-sustaining. Candle wax is a mixture of several molecules, but assuming it's C25H52. The way a candle works is that energy from the flame first warms and then melts some of the wax. Liquid wax then flows up the wick via capillary action, providing more fuel for the flame. Because candles burn for as long as there is still wax, we know that the energy released by burning C25H52 must be greater than the energy needed to first heat and then melt C25H52. Now, part A. Write a balanced equation for the combustion of C25, H52 with O2. Okay, usually combustions involving hydrocarbon are going to take a form like this. Um, I'm just going to use for the subscripts just uh, N and M. They could be any numbers. Plus molecular oxygen gas yields carbon dioxide gas and steam or gaseous water. Now in this case we have C25H52 so C25H52 which is in this case in a solid state as it said before it's candle wax uh, plus oxygen gaseous yields CO2 plus H2O and I didn't leave space there note that they're gas you want to do that even if it's not asked you always want to do that just to make sh just so you know what you're working with and it just shows your professor that you know what you're talking about um, now we have to balance this usually these some of these can get really tricky because here you have an odd number of oxygens although on this side you always need to have an even number that usually comes into play when the number of hydrogens in the hydrocarbon is not, when it's divided by 2, it comes out to an odd number. In this case, 52 divided by 2 is 26, so we're okay, as you'll see right now. First, I balance the carbons. 25, put a 25 over here. 25 carbons, 25 carbons. Next, I'll balance the hydrogens. 52 here. This in water is an H2, so 52 divided by 2, 26. Now we add up the oxygens, 26 here plus 50 there is 76. 76 divided by 2, 38. So 38 there, I didn't quite leave enough space there. Um, And that's it. Nothing, nothing else to it. Part 2. Given that C25H52 has a heat capacity of 2.5 joules per gram Celsius, which is heat capacity and specific heat are synonymous, a heat of fusion of 225 joules per gram and a melting point of 54 degrees Celsius, estimate the minimum amount of energy released when a gram of C25H52 is burned assuming the candle is at 25 degrees Celsius or room temperature. Um, this question is, it's the, the solving of it is something I'm sure everyone in Gen Chem has already done, but the way it's asked is a little bit, it combines two or three different topics at once. Um, in order to, for us to understand how to solve this, if you haven't already see the solution right away, is to figure out what's happening. So have a candle I'm a horrible artist pardon me we have a candle that's burning wick is lit the wick burns quickly as I as I already said in the introduction what happens is the wax the wax is what provides the wick with something to burn it goes up it melts from the solid state here in the here in the candle it melts 
each time it melts and is combusted it gives off energy which provides which goes back down to the candle and melts more wax so more wax can travel up the wick and be burned where the flame is at well in order for that to happen for the solid candle wax here to go up there in the liquid it has to melt we all have seen heating curves before usually for water but they look something like that the the straight lines are the this is going to be temperature and that's energy the straight lines are the phase changes where we have to add the temperature even though we're adding energy temperature doesn't change because that energy is changing molecules or whatever substance this heating curve represents from one phase to the other. In this case, this is this here is the solid phase. That's the liquid phase and then gas phase. Okay. So, what do we have here? We have solid candle at 25 degrees Celsius. Well, before it's going to melt, first we have to raise the temperature of it. We have to add energy. How do we do that? Well, we find out what Q is. Q being the amount of energy we need to add to raise the temperature of that wax before it can be melted. This little line right here in the graph. So Q equals CP times N, or the mass, times delta T, the change in temperature. So, specific heat was 2.5 joules per gram C degrees. Times the mass, 1 gram, times delta T, which is going to be TF minus TI. The final temperature, 54 degrees Celsius, minus the initial temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. When we do that, we get 72.5 joules. That's the amount of energy we need to add so that one gram of this paraffin candle wax will melt. Not burn, just melt. That energy needs to be added. It's energy that's used up. Now when it does melt, it gives off a heat of fusion. which is already given to us as 225 joules per gram. And how much heat of fusion does one gram give off? Well, delta H fusion is going to equal, in this case, 225. You can already see the, what it's going to be, but I'm just writing it out. 225 joules per gram times one gram. Grams cancel. So when one gram of paraffin is burned, 225 joules are of, of energy are evolved from it. So what do we make of all of this? We need to use 72.5 joules to raise the temperature of the paraffin up to the point where it will combust. Or rather, up to the point where it will be carried up the wick in a liquid and then combust where the flame is at. So the amount of energy that's actually given off is going to be... the delta H minus the Q should be 225 minus 72.5 these are both joules and that's equal to 152.5 joules and that's your answer for that part when you burn one gram of candle wax is 152.5 joules given off. Now, that means that every time you burn a gram of candle wax, you give off some heat, and that heat goes to two things. One, it gives the heat if you put your hand over the flame, and two, it provides additional energy to keep melting the candle wax so the candle stays lit. It doesn't go out until you run out of wax or until some until oxygen is cut off from it or whatever. 
it's a continuous reaction it keeps providing energy for itself to keep going all right time's up and I, I'll post part two next to this and the problem is posted in the little side box to the side of this video thank you